Alright everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the first episode in a new series that I'm calling Drinking in Bed, Talking About Film, or Dib Taff for short. The title's pretty self-explanatory each time. I'm just going to be sat on my bed talking about a different film related topic. It could be a review or it could just be something that's interested me to do with film recently. And each and every time I'm going to have a different alcoholic beverage. The one I've decided to go with for the first episode, just keeping it nice, simple, refreshing is Thatcher's Haze, Quality Somerset Cider. I'll get the Thatcher's cracked open. And the first film that I'll be discussing on this series is The Lighthouse, 2019 film directed and written by Robert Eggers, starring Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe in the two lead roles. And the film centres on two lighthouse keepers who are stranded on the island where they're working together and they slowly lose the sanitor. And the theme we want to delve into today when it comes to this film is the theme of gaslighting, how it's incorporated in the film and the importance of it being in the film as well. So first, before delving into the theme of gaslighting in the White House, I just want to talk a little bit about elevated horror. So elevated horror is a genre which sort of breaks away from the typical horror conventions, such as jump scares and gore, and goes for more psychological or emotional scares, which allows it to sort of include more themes relating to social issues or mental health issues. So when we're thinking about elevated horror, that's going to be films such as Get Out or Hereditary, uh, Robert Eggers has actually been quoted as saying that when he first was writing scripts uh, they were getting turned away for being too weird and being unable to be tied to a genre and while The Lighthouse is definitely very difficult to tie down to one particular genre um, at the same time tying it to elevated horror or certainly leaning into that genre allows him to sort of delve into themes like gaslighting within the film where he wouldn't particularly be able to in just a typical horror film. Obviously it helps a lot that it's backed by A24 which has also produced films like Midsummer. so that's a massive help to him in doing this and it's very important that it's within the elevated horror genre or certainly leaning towards it so that Robert Eggers was able to put the theme of gaslighting within this film. Gaslighting is a term that's been around for quite a few years now. It actually originates from a 1938 novel where it turned into a film in 1944 called Gaslight. This is a film where a husband tries to manipulate his wife into questioning her perception of reality. But recently it's entered sort of public discussion a lot more. And actually in 2018 the Oxford Dictionaries named it one of the most popular words of the year. So that's just sort of revealing of how much it now is in the sort of public realm and the awareness of it has risen. And essentially gaslighting is that, is, is what it was within the film of Gaslight and the novel of Gaslight which is when someone in a relationship, and it doesn't have to be a romantic one, it could be a friendship, it could be a working relationship, for instance employer-employee, and it's where someone sort of twists and manipulates the truth to make the other person within that relationship question their perception of reality and actually if it's done over a continuous amount of time it's been proven to cause severe mental health issues uh, depression and anxiety but also a, a whole list of other mental health issues which is part of the reason why I think it's so important that Robert Eggers put this theme within the White House and after the clip analysis I'll sort of get more onto the importance and, and why it sort of caught my interest so much but that in a nutshell is what gaslighting is and it is a very important issue that does need to be uh, discussed as much as possible and awareness needs to be raised of the effects and damage that it can cause. So we'll just move on to the clip analysis here. I've just got two clips from the White House so I'll go through the clips and then it's mainly two images that I want to sort of freeze on and focus on and sort of discuss how they relate to the themes of gaslighting in the film and there's a lot within the narrative that sort of points towards gaslighting but I really want to focus on film as a visual language. So that's what I'll be doing when I look through these clips. There's, there's many other examples throughout the film that I could use. 
but I'm using these two in particular because they're the two most interesting for me from a visual point of view in telling us how Eggers is getting across and putting it in the forefront of people's minds the idea of gaslighting within the White House. So let's move on to the clips and then I'll go through my thoughts. What? 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 That's what I mean! What? That's the trouble with you. That's the trouble with you. With you! With you! No! No! So let's just look at this first clip here. And there's three main aspects that I want to point out. And that sort of get across the theme of gaslighting within this scene. So the first aspect I want to bring up is the positioning of the characters. Now when it comes to film as a visual language, positioning and framing and all that sort of stuff is incredibly important in getting across the idea of power and control. So here we can see within the shot, and I'll refer to the two characters as referred to in the script, which is old and young, so old Willem Dafoe, young Robert Pattinson. And old is obviously sat above young, young is actually down in a very sort of vulnerable position, in this scene he's been drinking quite heavily and he seems more drunk than old so that sort of reinforces the power structures between them we already know through the narrative that old is the senior to young I mean the names even there give it away but the positioning within this scene sort of reinforces that again in the audience's minds and sort of gets us thinking about that and thinking about how through his power he is able to gaslight young into thinking and believing what he's telling him is reality. We're then also looking at the space between the two. So as we can see in the middle there, there's a nice gap between them, which sort of is a visual representation of distrust and a lack of warmth between them at this point. So there's a space there which shows us in a visual sense the sort of gaslighting elements coming into play. And then the third one I want to raise here is the use of shadow. So obviously the White House is shot in black and white and I know sometimes with black and white it can put people off, they can think it's arty for the sake of arty but for me here and throughout this film the shadows are used to symbolise distrust, mystery, suspicion, all that sort of stuff and they're used really well in this scene as you can see from this shot so they're the three aspects we're looking at here where this is just one example but throughout the film Eggers really shows us you know, gaslighting coming into play here, power structures, control, trust, and all of these elements are shown to us in a visual way, and it puts us, them at the forefront of our minds, and then we're thinking of them as the film goes on. So it doesn't need to be explicit about them, it's quite subtle, and it's something that you sort of, it sort of gets hammered into you as the film goes on. So now moving on to this second one here, again positioning comes into play massively here. You've got Willem Dafoe again looming, stood above him, looking down upon him. Young looks fearful and old looks powerful, he looks mythical. He looks like something that if Young wanted to take him on he could not defeat him because he stood above him, he's towering above him, the light shining from his face. And again, the use of shadows here is really important in sort of establishing power and control within the film. Now, power and control is a big part of gaslighting. So thinking back to when I was establishing what gaslighting is, in a relationship, obviously your partner, there's someone that you want to trust and that you willingly hand your trust over to. So they have an element of power over you. When you're in an employer-employee situation, they can decide on whether or not you get fired, if you get a promotion, a pay rise, a demotion. So gaslighting is 100% about power and control. And throughout the film, Eggers 
through visual language sort of uh, hammers that in to the audience, makes it clear, but it doesn't just do that through the narrative, it is through the images and the performances from the two lead actors are incredible in this film as well and really help get across this sort of theme that as I'm going to go on to now, I'm going to establish why it stood out to me so much and why I think it's so important that this sort of idea is in a modern film. So I'll go into that now. So on to the importance. Why is this something that stood out to me so much? For me, it's because Eggers obviously positions this as being an old fashioned film through the black and white aspects already mentioned, but also through the aspect ratio. It all makes it feel like very old horror. But by going back and putting in this relevant mental health term, it takes that sort of old horror and pulls it into the modern day and updates it. And I think, just like with Midsummer, which also included the theme of gaslighting in a more explicit narrative way, I think it's important that these sort of new terms are being revisited when sort of making films that pay homage to the old type of horror films. Because I think the more that we discuss gaslighting and the more that we're aware of its effects, the mental effects that it can have on people when it's sort of put upon them and when they are ghastly, I think the more that we're aware of it, the more that we can recognise the signs and start to combat it. So I think Eggers putting it within his film was so important. I think it sort of put it more in the public consciousness along with Midsummer, And I think the more that it is there, just the better it's going to be because I think we've all mental health issues it's important to discuss them but seeing as this is something which is actually a cause of mental health issues I think in some ways it's even more important to be aware of it and to discuss it because then we can start looking at, at sort of getting out of those situations hopefully before they get to those points I mean it's incredibly difficult anyone who's ever been in those type of relationships because as I've discussed it's about control it's about power it's about trust and it's just very difficult but maybe we can start to see the signs of it in our own relationships and maybe we can start to see signs of it in our friends and family's relationships and then get involved and, and sort of help as much as we possibly can so for Robert Eggers to be able to include such a theme in that sort of film I think brilliant I mean it's an amazing film and the two scenes I've shown are very much out of context but I would absolutely like implore you to go and watch The Lighthouse immediately. Apart from just this theme of gaslighting, the whole rest of it is made with like such love and such sort of effort and passion. It is a brilliant film. So, you know, go and watch it. So that brings us to the end of the can and the end of the first episode. I hope you've enjoyed and thank you for watching if you've made it this far. It's been something that's really difficult to do because it's something completely different to what I'm used to. I know in this first video I might have stumbled over one or two words or something like that but I'd rather just do it, get the ball rolling and then once you've done it once next time's a lot easier because you sort of learn as you're just going along and as you're making them so I hope you have got something out of it I'm going to be leaving some links down below because I know and I acknowledge that what I've been discussing is quite a serious topic even though I've tried to do it you know in a sort of informative type way but it, it genuinely is a serious issue which affects a lot of people so there will be links down below for further research into that and further places where you can get help. And yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any drinks or films or topics to suggest for the next episode, please just drop me a message, a comment. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. And uh, cheers.